Welcome back, episode six of Legends and Dragons. Welcome to the Legends Lair. I just came up with that. That's really <laughs> good. <laughs> the Legends that just happened. And well, right before, uh, as our production team, if you will, was messing around with that camera, I was like, Legends the le Lair. The Legends Lair. That's good. I like it. That's good. So, last week, episode five, right. got a lot of good feedback on on episode five, and so just want to share this story and. And I asked this individual if I can drop her name. Oh, okay. So went to jujitsu. Typically after we record, I go over and hit the 12 p.m. class at jujitsu over at Carlos Machado's. And I was sharing with uh, this young lady. I say young lady. She's younger than me, but she's in her 20s. And was sharing what we discussed on the podcast about the loss of my dad, about you know losing him at a young age. And she was sharing with me her story okay. and said that we we practically have the same story. Like she really? just lost her dad. Her hmm. dad was like 43, I believe. Um, so Bella, if you're watching this, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. And Bella, let me tell you about this. this after she just demolished me, by the way, on the mats. Oh, good. Yeah. After she ripped off my arm, beat me with it, and right. then put it back on my body which is the hard part which, yes, yeah. absolutely she she, uh, she tells me as she's sharing that I'm basically as old as her father was sure you're very and, old I, well here's the thing I don't think that I am no, until no. she told me that yeah. now I did tell her as we were talking she's so she's a few years older than my daughter and of course she's not my daughter but I told her that I'm proud of her for the work that she has done, obviously this far in life with jujitsu and and this, I mean, she is she is amazing. I'll tell you what, I'm I'm mildly scared of her husband though, oh, because he did fight to win. I couldn't go over in Dallas to watch him, but I was streaming, and <laughs> he he choked this his opponent so with with the lapel choke. It was phenomenal, and oh, I was good. like, I was like, you know, I'm. I'm mildly scared of Justin. Yeah. So Justin and Bella, I salute you. I'm proud of you guys. Thanks for letting me name drop you guys. Um, here's something I wanted to ask because we got a good list of uh, topics here. But before we go into, you see that Master Ken? Yeah. Video. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently his dad is Pat Burleson. Never, never heard, heard of him. him. Never. That's a legend. Never heard. Of him. So funny, dude. <laughs> It was it was pretty great. I, I I laughed when I got that video, but something that we're going to talk about today. I just wanted to to discuss monkeys. How fun! The reason why I want to discuss monkeys is monkeys are my favorite animal. Now, if you look on my like social media reels, you know the algorithm. It's jujitsu. It's taekwondo. It's boxing, and it's gorillas and monkeys. Right. That's pretty much what I go. To. And of course, every time I see a gorilla, I'm like, man, that is that animal in and of itself could probably just absolutely just just put its hand. There's no probably th about you, it. You think so? But see, that's what I want. That's what I want to ask. Okay, so obviously a newborn monkey, and, and I don't advocate, by the way, being no, up no, in not at all. Animals, right? No, now. we want to be very clear about that. Clear. I don't want. I don't need PETA. We're, no just, baby monkey uh, <laughs> abuse at all. But I mean, other than baby monkeys, other than newborn monkeys, which I think that we could probably beat up. At yeah, what yeah. age, like, like a monkey, like, uh, do you think that you can beat up a one-year-old monkey or gorilla? One-year-old. Well, well, okay, so uh, I'm not a zoologist. Um, I should. Uh, that's shocking. I should be clear about that. Okay. I don't know at what point a simian reaches uh, adolescence. Um, but I think that by the time it is a whatever the adult equivalent of a teenage monkey is, I think we're out. You think so? Yeah. So at the well, because forward. a monkey, a, you know, a, a chimp, just a chimpanzee. We're not even yeah. talking about a gorilla. Yeah, just yeah, a just chimpanzee. Chimp. Yeah, has the strength of ten grown men. How can they, how, how do they know this? Huh? I well, mean, do they, well do they no, I saw the studies. Men. What they did is they had 10 grown men. <laughs> just, okay, just that's not the, true. I didn't see that. <laughs> Good. I'm making well, that up. So, so monkeys. So when I, was, when I was in Europe, when I was stationed in Germany, we talked about this, and I was able to fly around Europe for free. You mm. know, I, Let me take it back. Not for free. It was Ryanair 
sometimes was practically free, mm -hmm. very, very cheap airfare. So I flew to Spain and went to the Rock of Gibraltar. Now, it's still English owned. The Brits still own the Rock of Gibraltar, but it's in, it's in Spain. And on a clear day, you can see Africa, mm -hmm. the coast of Africa on the other side. So before I go there, I, I start doing some investigating and they, they got wild monkeys just i mean they're they're not they're wild monkeys they're just yeah. out and about just hey look here comes a monkey right so i read a story a week before i went there about this lady who had like two monkeys or whatever so she made them a birthday cake it was like hey happy birthday little chimpanzee and then she died because the chimps Killed her. Killed her. Yeah. Just mauled her. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, that's in my head as I'm taking the cable car up to the top mm -hmm. of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking over from the cable car, watching these monkeys shake cars on top of cars, hitting. I, I mean, I was like, oh, my God, what is what's going to happen when I get to the top of this rock? Get to the top. Doors open. I'm, I'm here with like a couple British a british couple and probably some other people <clears throat> as soon as the door opens this little this little monkey i say little monkey probably the size of a four or five year old jumps across into the cable car and i have a banana yeah. in my hand which is good just yanks that banana yeah. right out of my hand yeah and of course the british lady in in my best british accent that monkey stole his banana. Do you like that? Was that that was <laughs> the worst British accent? No, I think that was pretty solid. Rate that British accent. Yeah, yeah. I think that was pretty solid. Yeah. Anyway, so I go and I have no idea. I'm like, this monkey's about to maul my face off. Right, right. Because I just read that article. Did you already? Did you heard the birthday cake monkey? Because I heard. Because oh, I heard before the what? before the banana. Yeah, before the banana. Oh gosh, so, I so you were terrified. So yeah, well, that monkey grabs my hand and just yanks it out. Jumps across, peels it like a, a machine. Just you said. anyway, so we get to the top, and I'm there's this French couple, <clears throat> and this monkey jumps on the the Frenchman's back, and unzips his book bag, and is throwing notebooks, camera gear, just all sorts. I mean, that monkey. I mean, there's nothing. There was nothing curious about that monkey. That wasn't that that monkey was going to cause damage. That like, monkey was on a mission. <clears throat> he was on a mission to rob. And yep. steal yep. and to be a havoc to yep. everyone. Anyway, so of course, then this British guy, he's he's kind of he's kind of drunk. He licks his fingers and he just slaps that monkey off that Frenchman's back. And of course, I'm, the jokes that are just coming sure, real sure, rapidly sure, sure, in sure. my head. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. So anyway, so now I still have like two oranges in my pocket, and I go around and I'm enticing the monkeys. And I'll share some pictures on on the Legends and Dragons Facebook page, but. So anyway, so I'm trying to entice these monkeys like, hey, little monkey, hey, little monkey. And so I'm looking at the monkey and then I see the people that I'm with, their eyes. I mean, because they're looking at me, their eyes grow big. And I'm like, Whoa. and so now I'm scared because they're looking scared. And I, and as I turn around, this monkey is Spider-Man crawling down the wall to get this. So I throw the orange. Well, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, give them the orange. And so like, anyway, so all that to say, I was thinking... Could I beat up those monkeys if I if I needed to? No. You don't think so? No. Because now it's a miracle you're still alive. Well, we were talking we we had Professor Philip here yeah. teaching to uh, two weeks ago when I was here. And he was talking about monkey monkey paws. The monkey, monkey finger. The monkey, yeah, yeah, the monkey, monkey grip. And uh, for some reason that's just been all I'm like, man, monkey, I need to start doing more monkey grips because, you know, the thumbs and the monkey. Well, and here's like, the thing. You asked the question. Could one of us beat up a monkey? Okay. You, yeah, didn't, you didn't ask the question if uh, Professor Philip uh, could beat up a monkey. I think his odds are better. You think so? Yeah, of course. Of course. Here's the thing. It does. I mean, a monkey, the structure of a monkey's body is not dissimilar to a human's. So if you got your hooks in and you got a naked choke, like if you managed to get in that position, yeah. they would chunk up, choke, chunk. They would choke unconscious, I'm assuming, in a similar manner to a human. My point is, I think one of them yeah. could get that position a lot faster than one of us could get that position. You know what I, 
this idea just all I'm of totally sudden, guessing uh, the, by the way. Well, no, no, this is this is good. I think for a fundraising idea. Oh yeah. You think I mean yeah. like if we get Professor Philip yeah. or even Professor Greg go, Yes. Hey, but we have to get like it have to be a cutoff because obviously a grown monkey, I mean we don't want to do that, but there has to be like maybe between the ages of one and three against Professor Philip or Professor Greg. And then we then Well, we I charge. say we don't stop there. Okay. I say on. we go full on octagon like the first UFC and we Just, get different styles of martial arts together. Okay. And um with different okay, monkeys. Had, but here's the thing, how do you get consent from a monkey? I'm not sure that they can legally give consent for a cage fight. I don't think the rules would apply to them. I'm I assuming that you, you and I would be <clears throat> in a colossal amount of trouble for setting up said event. But I don't, I don't think we can get in trouble for talking about it. I don't know. I think we should try it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I mean, right? I mean, like, it's, it's well, like that's the thing. great thing about jujitsu is here's the problem. If we get Master Valdez in there, okay, it's Grandmaster now, isn't it? Grandmaster yeah. Valdez. Yeah, so we get uh, Grandmaster so we Valdez. get Grandmaster Valdez in there. Here's the problem. This is a Kobayashi Maru. This is a no-win scenario. Okay, either the monkey kills him, okay. which is not cool, or he Taekwondo kickboxes a monkey and wins, and then he beat up a monkey, which is not cool. But jujitsu, the monkey's yeah. fine. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So, like they just yeah, wake up. Okay, they're fine. So, so we would have to go jujitsu style. It would only be jujitsu. So we couldn't box. No, 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 no. Have no. you seen? There's a video that I. Well, seen and how about, do you know if they have a concussion? I don't know. They, right. They, they I mean, what are they going to be able to give their phone number? No, listen, and address? I saw this. this. What? What's that dude's name? He was Ferris Bueller. What's his name? Uh, 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 Broderick. Matthew right? Broderick. Right. He did. He was in like some project, uh, project X. Yeah, where they with exposed him to radiation. Well, with the monkeys, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, where like, they were where testing they, the effects of a nuclear the bomb. Monkey, the monkeys were like given sign language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. The monkey flew a plane. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Well, in Congo. Well, that's how you would know if the monkey had a concussion. You yeah. would have to. You he would communicate with. Well, you they, they, we there. would. So we would only need to be able to do the kickboxing version with monkeys that could sign. Yeah, so we would have to make sure that they can sign. No, like so they'd be like, I'm okay. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm I mean? Okay. Yeah. Man, have you seen, there's a video. It was like a National Geographic team, I guess, in the... the We're jungles. tackling the big issues here, <laughs> by the way. The, yeah. the, the jungles, of, jungles of Africa, I think. Right. Or whatever these monkeys were. Anyway, they this big old gorilla, I mean, they were just some monk. Big old gorilla just comes by, grabs this man by his foot, a photographer, and just drags him. Yeah. And just lets him go. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, I would be I would be absolutely terrified. But I think the gorilla just did that just to prove, like, dude, I could jack you up. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Easily. Yeah. Anyways, well, that was good, man. I like the monkey. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about sure. jujitsu and combat jujitsu. Absolutely. So here's a question that was, uh, that was asked. And, and that's a good question. What do you know now that you wish you knew or understood or saw at the beginning of your martial arts journey. So what do you know now that you wish you knew, understood, or saw at the beginning of your martial arts journey? So for me, yeah. so I was I was thinking about this. So 44, uh, with sparring, I wish that I would probably have been a little bit more selective mm. in my sparring mm. partners. Like now... I'm very selective in my sparring partners because I have kind of like that knowledge about going in there as an adult, you know, with all these these mass murderers, if you will, sure. that probably were taking out their daddy anger issues on mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But what's okay because yeah, I, yeah, that, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that because I like this question because it got me thinking, and I'm going to ask you in a second your stance on okay. sparring now. Okay, I mean, I know it, but I want sure. you to say it on camera. So I, I wish that I would have probably been a little bit more selective because there was probably some injuries that I encountered that I probably could have avoided right. if I just spoke up a little bit. Right. Because something that I like what you do every time 
before we spar here is you say, hey, basically going back to the monkey. <laughs> so like if you are if if they're going a little too hard and, and hurting you, use your words. Don't use the force to communicate like, oh yeah, that was a little hard. Let me hit you harder. Oh, now you hit me even harder, and now we're in a in a street fight. And we still so, run the risk of doing that. Yeah. Like that's why I have the conversation every time. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So what do I what do you what do I wish I I knew now uh, that yeah. I knew then what I know now? Yeah. Okay. Like you could go back in time. Going, yeah, 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 hey, yeah. Hey, younger chance. Yeah. The, right. Like this isn't a question we ask ourselves on a regular basis. Right. So my uh, my main mentor, my main instructor, Hanshi Kovar, um, has a saying that you're running your own race. Okay. Um, and that's based off of the concept of comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And we, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> you know, in the beginning when you started doing martial arts and you were a white, yellow belt, whatever, yeah. and you saw the brown belts and the red belts, and you saw the gulf between skill level, between you who were just lucky enough to, to not punch yourself in the face, <laughs> and them, and then you look at them and you go, oh my gosh, I'm never, like I'm never going to be that good. Yes. I'm never going to be that good, Yeah, right? So I just had this conversation with a, a newly promoted black belt of mine and uh, we were talking about, I've, you know, I've promoted a lot of people to black belt over the years. And so I've come to um, be pretty familiar with some real common things that happen after a black belt test. I call it the postpartum black mm -hmm. belt. I remember where, you having this conversation uh, with me. There's a depression that happens <laughs> after you get your black belt because you've been working and building and working and building and you had this goal. And then when it's over, there's a deflation that happens. You're like, what now? Right. Right. Um, and then the imposter syndrome starts to set in, okay? Yes. Um, and this is all based on comparison level thinking. So you remember the gulf that I was telling you about right. between yep. brown belts and white belts, mm -hmm. okay? Now that we're black belts, that gulf is a thousand times worse and we're all wearing the same belt. Yeah. We look Absolutely. at black belts. I look at my instructors. You know, I look at Professor Philip. Right. Okay. I understand jujitsu and submissions vastly more than somebody who has never done jujitsu. Right. Right. So, like somebody on their very first class that has never wrestled and has never done jujitsu, I wouldn't have a problem rolling with them. Right. <clears throat> that gulf is exponentially greater between me and Professor Philip. I mean, it's it's vast, it's like an ocean, yeah. right? Even though I kind of understand jujitsu, compared to him, I don't understand it at all. Right. Right? Um, so my instructors, that gulf is there, right? So once you become a black belt, what ends up happening is you look at other people with black belts and you're like, I'm not even anywhere close to this person's skill but we're both black belts. Right. You know, and so that's why I have to try to lock this in, this feeling of I just need to be better than I was yesterday. Right. Otherwise, like it gets, it feels hopeless. Like I'm never yeah. going to get there. But here's the thing, Jimmy, that's because there's no there. Right. Yeah. Where's the finish line? There is here just not giving up. Right. You know, yeah. um, so I wish that I had known that. But the great thing about that concept, and this is what I love about martial arts, is take martial arts skill out of it and apply that to everything. Oh, absolutely. Comparison really is the thief of joy. Right. You know? Yeah. And um, I like that saying because you're absolutely correct. And and I know that you and I have talked right, right before my black belt test years ago, you we talked about that that honeymoon phase. Yeah, watch out, right. right? And so that never really that never really hit me. You Only know why it didn't? Why is that? Because you jumped into jujitsu immediately. I think you know what, and I think that is right. Because when I think about that, I did. I didn't stop. No, you didn't. I went right from black belt over at Taekwondo and Master Valdez to jujitsu over at Machado. So I have. You didn't have an opportunity to deflate, and I didn't want Good. that opportunity. Good. I, I made sure that I kept kept going in something right. new, 
right? And that is what I love about cross training is if for me, I had no ego going into Machado's. Like I have people, they I've been told from, you know, probably well from Professor Philip and from others that there's some guys that walk in there with an ego like, oh, I used to, I used to wrestle and I used to, oh, I know this, and then they just got absolutely sure. smeared. I went in there knowing nothing about the ground. A game. big part of that, Jimmy, is because you were taught well. Yeah, I you was weren't surrounded. taught by people who were egomaniacs. It is true. Yeah, and I surrounded myself with people who yeah. are not ego. I mean, yeah. between you, Valdez, Greg, Philip, you know, I'm surrounded. Izzy, I'm surrounded by guys that they don't like. I know that they can absolutely destroy me. But absolutely. they don't act like it. They, they don't, don't act carry like themselves it. that way. Absolutely, and that's what I love about it. But I also something that so we have three adult white belts has just joined Taekwondo over. Yeah, oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. The parents. The yeah. parents. Oh, yeah. man. I was, it's wonderful. Your dad does my heart yeah. good to see them. Sure. And so, as I was telling them yesterday in class, I said, My karate is not your karate. Mm -hmm. It's not Master Valdez's karate. Right. Like, your karate is your karate. You can only do what your body can allow you to do. I'm not going to throw a crescent kick very high with my left leg. I, I just know that just because I'm, I'm damaged goods, if you will. So I tell them, and and shout out to Shane Bingham for telling me this. He goes, "Ugly karate is still karate." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you laugh at everyone I, on the couch. I, I was right, and yeah. I I say that as often as yeah. I can because it's true. And that imposter syndrome. Make sure you don't do that. Make sure you take the words that Chance has said and listen to it because comparison in anything and everything. There is plenty of room at the top. That's what that's what Mama Klaus tells our kids all the time. Like, there's no reason to just put that aside. Lift the others up with you. Rising tide lifts all boats. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is good. That's some good stuff that I wish. Well, I'm I'm thankful for teachers that have that that showed me in the martial arts world because carrying that ego too. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I've seen too many people just get. Um, I, I will tell you this though. It does it does my heart a little sure. happy when I see the ego guy walking through the door and just get smashed by the Bella Scotts of the world or the sure. journey Klauses of the world well, or whatever. There, there's a, there's a little <laughs> scoundrel in us that appreciates that. But here's the cool thing. Yeah. Here's the cool thing. Um, in a very spiritual sense, Jimmy, if that's done appropriately and that's done the right way, mm -hmm. that person being broken down a little bit, Right. will actually grow into a far more quality human being. So we're actually getting a chance to do what I would call like to see God's work happening right yeah, in front absolutely. of us where, you know, your illusions of the, uh, of the force of nature that you thought you were, right. those need to be broken down a little bit. Yep. You know, uh, and we all, Jimmy, we all suck standing next to somebody. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. But we, we all look pretty good standing next to somebody else. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so you don't, I mean, you have the mirrors here. So we have the mirrors at, uh, at, over at Excel Academy as well. And I, tell, I told the adults yesterday, and this is like their third class, so they're still getting into it. And I said, listen, I said, every time I'm on the mats, every time, I think I'm look like Master Valdez or Bruce Lee or Master Burleson or Greg Hamilton, any of these guys. But then I catch myself in the mirror and I look like Shrek. I look like Shrek doing martial arts. <laughs> and they just started laughing. I was like, listen, you, in, your, in my mind, oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. Listen, I've uh, sparred Shrek. You're a lot better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Do you see Shrek 1 inside that ring? He has some good wrestling moves, That's man. True. He could probably, That's he has true. has some jujitsu moves yeah. going on. Uh, so the ABCs, the next one. Oh, and, and when I said be selective in, in your sparring partners, for me, listen, I'm I, I would argue as an adult, if, I would say 40 and over, you can, you can be selective. But if Master Valdez said, Jimmy, go go fight this in the... Okay, yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I I don't say no. Like even right. when Professor Greg goes, hey, Jimmy, roll with... Yes, sir. Right. Absolutely. But I I know who the spazzy sure. individuals are. Sure. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, moving into the next question that we had was the ABCs of tournament fighting. So... That was kind of broad, and so I will start us off, and you can kind of feed us off that. So the ABCs of, of tournament fighting, obviously tournament fighting, 
you prepare tournament fighting different than if you were continuous sparring, mm -hmm. right? Because in tournament fighting, it's be first, be fast. Mm -hmm. You you want to be first to the points. You want to be be fast. Uh, our friend Matt Tyler, who is an absolute force of nature, absolute beast when it comes to just being first, be fast. He makes me look foolish every single time mm -hmm. that he's teaching me point sparring because. You know he's off. He's getting off the center lines. He's doing all the all the moves. You know he's he's getting. So to me, the ABCs of, of point fighting is one: know where the judges are. <laughs> if you, the head judge, and you got your two judges, I am going to make sure that I somehow turn my opponent to where the two judges see the kick versus one. Mm -hmm. Because if you see the kick and you call stop. And the two judges don't see the kick. Like you call the points, like oh, that was a great kick. The two judges, they, right. they don't, they don't right. see it at all. Of course, you got to also know are the judges moving, which I hope they are moving around and and being there. But I think that a couple a couple of things for the ABCs that I I get set for tournament fighting is one, I got to concentrate. Be first, be fast. You have to commit. Like there's no has like mm -hmm. you have to you have to go through. Get off you that wait, you line. lose absolutely. Uh, this, the third thing is find somebody that you're competing against. Like for me, my competition was Brian Creech. Sure. Like years ago, our our first tournament, right? I mean, it was it was Brian Creech. It was me. He he saw me fighting guys like like Crump and and, sure. and Davidson, and he was like at the tournament. We started. It, it was our competition. You were like, coming I up was, through the belts together. Absolutely. Too. Yeah. So for me, it was. I need to get the mats because I don't know if my opponent mm -hmm. is on the mats. Like every time I started thinking, oh, maybe I'll take a day of rest. Nope. I got to get on the mat. I got to do something because my opponent's not resting. So, of course, you know, now that Brian and I are black belt, I mean, it obviously our friendship grew because sure. of the tournaments and stuff. But I, that's what I tell even the kids and find that person. I say nemesis, but they're not nemesis. Find your. Iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Find your find your person that you've been competing up the ranks, like Talon and Jet. Like those two knuckleheads have been. Oh well, yeah, maybe Talon takes first in yep. the tournament. Then Jet yep. takes first, and then first second, first second, and then as they go up in the ranks, like oh, there's more competition now. I have to to work. That's at least my philosophy on on tournament fighting. Be first, be fast. Adjust yourself to where the judges see. Find yourself somebody that's going to to sharpen you on that. What do you, what say you? You have competed in many more tournaments than I have. So I'll I'll try to not make this too chance heavy. Um, but I have a lot to say about this. You should. Um, so uh, I was in a tournament every weekend my whole childhood, and it was a very different tournament fighting in the eighties was as different than tournament fighting now. How so? Oh, well, it was a lot rougher. Very rougher. Almost, almost nobody wore headgear. Um, just hand and foot pads. And they called us sissies for wearing those because, you know, 10, 15 years before that, they didn't wear gear at all. Right? Right. So, um, but it was a lot harder. It was a lot rougher. Um, and it was okay that it was harder and rougher. Yeah. You know, they thought they were being safer just because we were wearing gear, which I guess we were. We were still hitting real hard. Right. And I was, you know, nine or 10 years old. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> so Matt actually shared with me a philosophy, Tyler, mm -hmm. um, on the difference between continuous fighting and point fighting. It was a great analogy and I'm, I've stolen it from that moment and I'll use it forever. Continuous sparring is I have unlimited magazines in, uh, a machine gun. Okay. Okay. Point fighting is. I have a magazine with five rounds. Now, if you're good enough with those five rounds, you can do what you need to do. Right. Right? But I don't have unlimited um, counter shots. I don't have unlimited. I don't have, I can't just rain on you. Right? Sure. And so you have to be, there are some things that you have to be better at in point fighting, which is why it's not useless. For those of you who think tournament fighting is useless, I would like to point out uh, a couple of gentlemen, Raymond Daniels, the real deal, um, Stephen Thompson, the Wonder Boy, 
uh, they were point fighters. Okay. Like that's where they came from. That was their start, right? Um, that skill is useful in a different situation. I prefer doing continuous sparring just because uh, generally the uh, the intensity is not as high. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can just get the, the experience in. Sure. Right? Um, but I do not think point fighting is useless. I think it's very useful. It's a good yeah. skill to have in your toolbox. Right. Okay. I agree. So, but beyond that, um, this is what I don't like about competing in um, tournaments, sporting events, any kind of competition. I really, really strongly disagree with a lot of the character that I see. And I'm not talking about specifically karate tournaments. I'm talking about anything where we're competing team against team or person against person. Yeah. There is a risk of showing a very dishonorable low character. Oh, yes. Okay? So I'm not attacking <clears throat> martial arts at all. I'm just saying that we have to be careful. So I will still remember I was... 10, 11 years old, and I was in a tournament. You know, by the way, my daddy's Pat Burleson. So I had a bit of a preacher's kid thing yeah. going on. Right. Um, but I remember these other instructors would whine and complain about the judging. Hmm. And the parents would whine <clears throat> and complain about the judging. Yeah. Right? Um, and they would squeaky wheel. They would often get their way. Oof. Right? Yeah. The judges, you know, they'd get the arbitrator over and blah, 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 blah. And I remember getting in the car. I'd lost, but I'd actually won, but the judge didn't see it or they didn't call it or whatever. Right. Right? Happens all the time. Sure. Okay. Yep. And I got in the car and I was fuming. I was like, dude, you're Pat Burleson. Mm -hmm. If you had just said something, like, I would have gotten a fair shake, and I will never forget what he told me. He said, if you need the judging to be perfect to win, you're not good enough. Mm. The only thing you can do is outwork the bad judging. Yep. You be so good yeah. that even if the judges don't say you won, right. everyone in the room knows you did, you know you did, and you don't need the external validation of the trophy to know that you won. Right. Outwork it. Absolutely. And so what you do is when the judge makes a bad call, you say, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You shake the hand of the person who didn't really beat you, but they beat you. Right. And you show honor and integrity. Yep. And that's who he taught me to be. Right. Absolutely. He didn't teach me to be a petulant, whiny baby when I don't get my way. Mm. And I see a lot of that. Yeah, I and see some of that too. Like, for instance, here's <clears throat> another one. Point karate tournaments. Yeah. Okay? I am mysteriously only hurt because they hit too hard when I'm losing. Mm. Yes. I have seen oh, that no. too, judging. Oh, no. You're out <laughs> of control. You're hitting way too hard. Right. Funny thing is, when I'm winning, you were fine. Right. Yeah, I've seen that you too, know? judging. But when, I, but when I lose, everybody else was wrong. Right. You know? And, uh, and I don't mean to sound as attacking and mean as this probably sounds, uh, but grow up. <laughs> All right? Stop being a child. Right. We all know how to whine when we don't get our way. Yes. Um, I believe that the very, very best fighters don't do that. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, Master Valdez teaches from a very early on. Oh, I know. Very early on. It's one of the reasons on. we're friends. Teaches us that save that whining for the car ride home. Mm -hmm. Save it. No, I don't want to hear it. I, exactly the same thing. You shake the hand of your opponent, outwork. Don't wish for it. Work for it. Yep. All that stuff, and and it's good because from an early age for Talon, and and Journey, uh, yeah, probably both of them. Those conversations, I had to whisper that into their ear to remind them, hey, you're not just representing the House of Klaus. You're also representing Excel Academy. Mm -hmm. You're representing Master mm -hmm. Valdez. You do not want to act like this 
and embarrass. Right, but your... here's the thing, Jimmy. Your opponent yeah. isn't an opponent. Right. It's your friend. Right, exactly. Sparring is not an argument. It's a conversation. Yeah. Both things have words. Yes. If you and I are arguing, we're saying words. Right. If we're having a conversation, we're saying words. It's the same kicks and punches, mm -hmm. right? Sparring is a scrimmage. It's when the same team pretends to be opponents right. to sharpen each other. Right. And we make a mistake when we start thinking this person from the other school or this person from a school I've never seen before right. is my enemy, is my opponent. Right. The enemy is the one that jumps you on your car to the way, you know, in the parking lot. Right. That's the real enemy. Right. We're all friends sharpening each other. It's like the movie, uh, uh, I think it was Hero with Jet Li in China when they used to have these oh, fight to yes. the death matches. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, and then he, you know, kills somebody that he mean to kill and it kills, they come back and kill his wife and child. And then he comes back and has this renewed sense of when we compete, we shouldn't be trying to hurt each other. We shouldn't be trying to do that. Right. We should be trying as brothers and sisters to sharpen each other. Right. And I see that getting lost a bit and I don't like it. So you're seeing more of the you're my opponent. Well, I am I've going seen to... more of the stuff that seems to be common on a basketball court or a soccer field or a football field. I'm seeing more of that leak over making to its thing. way into martial arts. It has no place in martial arts. Let's talk about your philosophy in sparring. Because I know that has changed over the years. Great as well. deal. So you know at our school we 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 bang around pretty You hard. hit a little harder than we, we hit do a here. little harder. So and I'm not saying right, wrong. No, 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 here. no. But I also, I like that. I like learning over there where we we bang around pretty hard. And it wasn't until I came over here to your mats that I started to get even sharper mm. with my my sparring because of your philosophy. And I won't steal your philosophy. So what what's changed over the years for you? First of all, I should tell you that my father was the one who was yelling at me the longest about letting our people hit too hard. He came over, you know, I was running schools for years at this point. He's like, Chance, you're letting them hit too hard. You're letting them hit too hard. And I'm like, dude, you made me this way. I grew up in your schools. What do you mean? And here's the thing, Jimmy. I thought he had gotten old and soft. That's what I thought. Okay. I was perversely proud of how hard we hit. Right. Lots yeah. of blood on the floor. Yeah. You know how many noses I've set? No, I'm asking because like, I've lost count I, I, of how many say, noses that yeah, I've cracked back at my few. own, yeah. other people's. And I'm like, yeah, we're real karate. We're real karate. Right? Right. And then while he was training for black belt, my best friend at the time uh, got a concussion so bad that he had to go to a neurologist and uh, he was puking for weeks. Ugh. Couldn't drive. Yeah. Right? And when I saw it hit that close to home, he wasn't the first concussion in my school. Right. And my dad told me to look up a guy in Boston named Chris Rapphold. Okay. He's the executive director of Team Paul Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And he said, go get in his back pocket and learn what he does. Chris Rapphold has a system called retention-based sparring. And it's based on 30%. Don't hit harder than 30%. Right? And you learn to spar. My dad was like, Chance, how many national champions do we run out the door? Because we hit them with too much, too fast, right? right? Before yeah. they even had the ability to defend themselves, we're beating the snot out of them. Yeah. What kind of an environment is that? Right. You know? And so, again, I called it the year of seven concussions. We had seven people, adult students in my school that got mm. concussions in one year. Yeah. This teenager's, uh, teenager's dad said, threatened to pull his kid out of the school. And so I was like, I'm not going to let him keep doing this. Right. And so I got in his system and I started learning it. We've had him come out and teach yep. here at the school. Uh, yeah. Great, great um, teacher. And that's when we started. And it's taken us about seven years to redo our culture here. Right. Right. Um, that's where I got the sparring's a conversation. It's not an argument. Right. That's yeah. where, you know, if you are mean to me and I got to be mean to you back, 
I'm a child. Yeah. If you're mean to me, grow up and say, Jimmy, that really hurt my feelings. Could you not do that again? Yeah. That's what an adult would do. Right. Right. So when we're sparring and you hit too hard, I'm like, let's go a little bit lighter. Right. Okay. That's what an evolved human being would do. Right. An ape <laughs> will just hit you back. Yep. And it is boggling to me how many people have to talk with their fists. You know, they say violence is the language of somebody who refuses to communicate. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and so we've moved that way. And yeah. here's the added benefit. Now, we don't do, there's no reason to say added benefit. Benefit is added. Yeah. Here's the benefit. Unexpected benefit. Okay. I like that. The skill level here has shot through the roof. Oh, man, they have. We were possibly tougher before. Right. But dumber and less skilled. Yeah. Now, my black belts have a higher level of skill. Right. And if they had to fight hard, they could. Yep. But here's the great thing. Uh, the guy that's been on Joe Rogan's uh, podcast, the uh, the guy from Canada that teaches GSP, um, I think his name is mm. Fariz. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not familiar. He has this concept. He said, if you go to jujitsu three times a week and you give it 100%, and I go to jujitsu five days a week and I give it 50%. At the end of the year, I'm going to be better than you. Yep. The way we spar, you can come every Friday and do. Right. Yep. You're not nursing injuries for six weeks because you fought too hard. Yep. So you're getting more experience. That's why the skill level got higher because you don't have to take breaks for injuries all right. the time. No. And there, yes. Here's the other thing we look at cage fighters and boxers. And we think they train the way they fight in the cage. Yeah. They don't. No, they don't at all. My Muay Thai teacher, Krug yeah. Loss, mm -hmm. he's lived in Thailand. They play. It's light. It's touch pressure. Right. If you had a $100,000 purse on a fight, would you risk breaking your knuckle or getting your rib broken in practice? <sighs> no. Quit trying to win practice. And yeah. so that's our culture here. And I love it. Yeah. It's great. It makes, you know, Chris Rappold has a saying, there's, you shouldn't be afraid of fighting. Right. You shouldn't be doing it in a way that scares you. Right? right. You shouldn't do more than you're capable of doing earlier than you're capable of doing it. You look at the Russians, they talk about this, why the Russian wrestlers are so good because they have a relaxed play in how they practice. They're not full bore against the wall. Now they train a lot more because they play and they enjoy it. It's relaxed. Right. And so that's our culture here. Yeah. No, I love it. And in fact, uh, by the way, last podcast, I failed to say this. Congratulations to all your black belts and to all the black belts that tested two weeks ago. The, I meant to say that last podcast. It was a good test. Got to see your awesome. lovely daughter there. She came I, and helped. I know. I'm glad. I, I had to send the better Klaus yeah. over there. Uh, but uh, congratulations to all of you guys. And, and most of you I have sparred. And most, uh, all, not most of them, every one of them that I have sparred, their, their skill has absolutely, like they were, they were making me work. Right. They were putting my tail to work. Right. And in fact, one of your students who I'm going to give a shout out here to, Shandy. Yeah. Let me tell you, I know she's testing for black belt in October mm -hmm. and she asked me to be her, her corner in her corner and her skill mm -hmm. from unfortunately because my work schedule making me work six days a week i'm not mad at you there faa uh but from the time i sparred her probably six months ago to now just she spars every friday significant she's, she's sparring every friday i mean, I, ha I i put talent in there i'm like talent so put her to i mean he put her to work mm -hmm. but she didn't yeah. now course he was hitting her with what she typically hits me with i'm sure. like which is good hey, it's just good yeah. it was it's a circle was of training. life symbol it is a circle of yeah. life i know i was okay with that hey speaking of cage fighting yeah i was so somebody mentioned to me that we should we should live broadcast the ufc i know fights. that would be cool wouldn't it we, i mean i i think we can we get a friends. panel of people oh yeah like man. greg and philip and steven and bloss oh. and you know you and i would yeah, be I, 
Yeah, I, like we would be insects among gods when it came to um, uh, commentary. Yeah. But we, I think we're just there to be pretty. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would probably say that we. I'm not here to cast judgment on. No, it, no, no, we no. Are but definitely we're definitely pretty, we're, we're very pretty, pretty ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think that would be cool. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, we, <laughs> maybe we will look. Maybe we'll look into that. Yeah. But anyway, all that to say, somebody was asking me like, "Hey, Jimmy, would you ever do a UFC fight?" Like if they asked you. And of course, in my brain, I'm like, absolutely. Then I started thinking, well, how long could I actually last in the octagon? I came up with 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. I think 10 seconds I can last. Now, people will say, that's a little too much, Jimmy. I think you probably, no, I could run around. For 10 seconds. For, for at least nine of those seconds yep. until they catch me yep. and, and murder me. Yep. But would you ever, would you, well, like right now, would you, would you, now? Like, sure, how about somebody, somebody around our, age no no so and i'll tell you why i would kickbox okay i would kickbox yeah um but here's the other problem because i'm 51 all right um i've had three knee surgeries i have one shoulder surgery and every time that i had those um i got horribly depressed because i couldn't train oh yes okay yes so deciding to get in a knockout cage fighting type of thing right. i'm running the risk of another as more of a risk now that i'm old yeah um of more injuries and i know what comes with that injury yeah. i don't i'm not afraid of getting hurt right what i'm afraid of is the way i feel about myself when i'm not able to train right oh I, man i, I it, absolutely it, agree with it, that. it messes with my brain and my yeah. heart yeah um it's just not worth it yeah and, we and i've done it. A, I've done an MMA fight, an amateur oh, have, MMA. Oh, yeah. yeah, you were. That's yes, right. I you, was you twenty-five. With that. Yeah, you shared that. Uh, I think a couple podcasts ago. Yeah. Uh, so here's something. Here was another question as we transitioned back into the cage, if you will. Sport BJJ versus combat BJJ. Okay. I so first of all, I had to actually look up because I was like, combat BJJ. What is that? <laughs> that's exactly. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. So my take on sport BJJ versus combat BJJ. Now remember, you're getting the advice or the feedback and opinion of a two-stripe white belt here right. in uh, jiu-jitsu. One stripe white belt. <laughs> but I I like them both. From just the re the just the research I did asked that from that question, the combat BJJ. Now our stand-up game is pretty good. I'm going to say I'm, I'm just I'm just going to say our stand-up game is pretty good. Our ground game, obviously, that's why we're just white belts learning. The combat BJJ I saw fuses those two mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. I think there's something to be said about that. Yeah. Like, I mean, if if I'm in a if I'm in the street and someone comes and attacks me, they're going. There's no holds bar. Like, mm -hmm. they're, I'm not going to say, "Hey, let me stretch real quick," yeah, yeah. and let me, you know, yeah. they're going to they're going to come at me, open hand, close fists. Like, man, that looked intense. Yeah, I mean, it was intense, man. And now I saw though, it was just open palm. Like that's how they were hitting. Obviously, no close fist for the combat BJJ. But you can do a lot with an open palm. I've broken a lot of concrete with an open palm. Yes, yes, yes you have. Yeah, you have broken a lot of concrete. The sport BJJ. I mean, I'm as I'm getting into the the jujitsu world, seeing guys like uh, what Gordon Gordon Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, big name out there where there's some obviously the, the gracies big names out there and watching videos of them i'm like man these guys i mean it's it's poetic the way they move have you ever heard the phrase uh jack of all trades and a master of none yes do, do you know what we don't say that is actually a part of that statement mm. a jack of all trades and a master of uh of none is still better than a master of one that's actually the whole sentence. So what I would say is that I love that the combat jujitsu has brought that element of like, okay, there's some things I can't do that I can do in sport jujitsu right. that I can't do in this, right. right? That doesn't mean that the sport jujitsu isn't honing skills that right. you can use in the other. Sure. And arguably... Kind of like point fighting hones a skill that you can't hone in continuous fighting. Sport uh, jiu-jitsu probably hones skills in a way that you can't hone in combat jiu-jitsu. 
right? Right. So you have you seen the next level of this? It was just a matter of time. No, what's that? What's that? <laughs> you Car- haven't seen TFC? No. Are what's you that? serious? No, what, oh what's my TFC? Gosh. You are welcome. Okay. All right. Team Fighting Championship. Okay. Five on five. UFC type wait, fighting. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this like they're all in the, the cage all together? All of them fighting? are in the cage together. And when one of them gets taken out, <laughs> they gang up. Yes, I think I've seen a clip of this. I thought that was wild. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, so what it ends up being is very much like a sword fight. They go until someone, you know, the ref pulls them off one of them. Yeah. And then you end up in a UFC type situation where two or three people are on one person. Oh my goodness. Like, so that last guy, yeah, who is probably <laughs> the best, luckiest, or toughest, yeah, has a very bad day. Okay. <laughs> because he yeah. ends up fighting two or three people at once. So. I know that, so I know during your test and even sparring here, getting ready, and I know we're uh, at Excel, we do multiple fights. Mm-hmm. We go two on one, three on one, we, we do all that. On our degree tests now, we do three on ones. So we, yeah, so three on ones, and, but what you're saying is- No, 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 it's, you're trying because, to hurt them. Right, but there's, you're in a cage. Yeah. Like when we're, when we're doing it and we're training, like run, yeah, get yeah. out of yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's no, like you, you're going to have to fight one way or <laughs> well and the thing is is that this is oh, what man. i love about it which yeah. i'm sure it's got a very short shelf life because yeah. people are going to die man right oh, like yeah. it's going to happen but what i love is that it is illustrating that as effective as jujitsu is and it is yeah against two or three people yeah. Unless you can submit them on the way to the ground and yeah. pop back up, sure. You can't grapple two or three people. No, you can't. Um you you couldn't grapple a son and his father. While I was grappling you, Talon could kick my head like a soccer ball and yeah. that's it. Yeah. And so wow. to say that um, I'm not going to argue with, especially a high level jujitsu person yeah. that one-on-one it's n- not only the most effective, right, but the kindest, yeah, like the most gentle spiritual way of, um, of handling somebody because you don't even have to hurt them. Right. Like yeah. how demoralizing is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather be knocked out than submitted, you know? But, because here's the thing, if you knock me out, I didn't give up. Yep. That's true. But if you submit me, I'm like, okay, please yeah. leave me alone, you know? Yeah. Um, but to say that you don't need any yeah. striking at all, you don't need any striking, I believe that it's a really good idea. And this is just what I think. And obviously yeah. my curriculum shows that. Right. I believe you should have some experience in weapon range. Yeah, stick and blade. I think you should have some yeah. experience with that. I think you should have experience with long range kicking. Yeah. Taekwondo is the best. Yeah. Muay Thai is really good. You know, um, I believe that you should have inside elbow, headbutt, yeah, knee. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe that you should be able to do clinch work and takedown defense. Yeah. Wrestling is really good at that. You know, um, but you, ha- it, I don't see how in 2024 anybody can train in martial arts and just refuse to get any skill with jujitsu right no i, I just agree. don't see yeah how you can be a martial artist and just go you know what i'm not going to learn anything about that no you i i'm a big believer of cross training yeah i'm a big believer in knowing the striking because eventually you're going to get down to the ground and how are you going to protect yourself? Well, and that? here's the thing. Let's say you don't want to do jujitsu. Right. Dude, work with a wrestler for a year. Oh, yeah. At least Something. get good at not being taken down. Yeah. Speaking of uh, jujitsu being a, a very, uh, as you say, uh, I say gentle, if you're, if you're sparring. It can, it can be. It can, let me tell you, man. Professor Greg, did you see the video of him 
just absolutely i mean there's a lot of videos of him submit me and, and destroying and me. i watch all of them as we're rolling on the playlist comes up islands in the stream by dolly and kenny that is what we are we're nothing but islands in the stream so we're rolling and i hear the song come up of course i laugh and of course then greg puts me in a I, I can't do anything. He has my hips. I can't move. And, like, and of course, the video is very funny. And one of my friends said, aren't you supposed to fight back? I'm like, Dude, I, I I'm, am fighting I'm, back. I'm, I'm try I am trying. And that's what I love about jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get, you get that hip or you get that arm or what. Dude, you, you're mm -hmm. not moving. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the, the shapes that these dudes put me in. Gals and dudes, by the way. Yep. And the kid. Everyone, everyone destroys mm -hmm. me, by the way. So... It's amazing. I, I do agree. Cross train, jujitsu, whatever. Uh, the last one, last topic as we wrap this up, of course, someone wanted us to talk about dragons. I don't really. Legends and dragons. I mean, we name a dragon because Valdez. my teacher, Valdez, is also, he's been referred to as the blind dragon. But then I started thinking about dragons because I never really thought about dragons. Like, man, dragons. I got that, that game of uh, Game of Thrones. I didn't, didn't really get into that. But the only dragon... The only dragon that I know is Falcor. Would you say he's a luck dragon? Would you say yeah, he's a luck dragon. Yeah, Fal that that right there. I like Falcor. Yeah, he's like a luck fire. dragon. Did you ever see Reign of Fire with Christian Bale and Matthew McConaughey? Mm. Oh no. my gosh, no, so no. good. Is there dragons? Yeah. yeah. So what they? Uh, with, I mean, obviously, it's it it is a fictional movie, huh? Okay. Shocking. Yeah. But so uh, Christian Bale is a young boy. His mother, there's digging in the clay caves under London and discovers a cave that had been sealed off and it has a dragon in it. Okay. Right. And then they end up finding out that the dragons um, were what got rid of the dinosaurs. Oh, okay. Because they eat ash and they have uh, two glands in their mouth that uh, combine form liquid napalm and uh hmm. and so they it's apocalyptic they just completely destroy the entire planet right and they send the planet into an ice age because they burn everything to ash and then they starve to death and then they hibernate and there's this cycle it's wait, super wait, 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 great so super but it's the it is the uh you know the uh What's the word? The feudal European version of the dragon with the long, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the big wings and all. Not like a Chinese dragon. Well, so let me. So this is what this is kind of what frustrates my wife sometimes. Like I'll ask these questions. Sure. Like she goes, "You know, it's not real, right?" right? No, but I, but I still ask the question because I start to think, how did those dragons in this Christian Bale movie, like they were hi hibernating that long? Like, but they just one. Oh, just one. Just one. But how did he survive? Like, so you mean to tell me that this dragon has been hibernating for X number of years? Right. Like thousands of Apparently. years? Apparently. How did it eat? He didn't. Like a bear. You think he beat up a bear? <laughs> <laughs> I know that we talked about monkeys, but... <laughs> Listen, anyway. <laughs> I... I think that's a really good... Here, well, again, uh... I think that I could kill a monkey or a bear if it was trying to kill me if I had a long pointy stick. Ooh. I'm not saying I would. No, I'm saying that there's a chance. So chance is saying there's a chance. Yeah. I'm also saying that it could swat the, the spear away from me and then eat my brain. That that is also actually might even be the most likely. But what, so what what if you killed the bear or the monkey because it had a heart attack from laughing at you <laughs> with the stick? That is probably <laughs> you think? the most. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for uh, watching episode six. I have nothing else. That was right. pretty much our, our laundry list of, yeah, that's of good things stuff. to do. It was. It was pretty fun. So we're gonna have one more episode with the two of us. Yes. Sorry. Uh, and then we'll have uh, another guest. So we're going to do three with just um, the models. Absolutely. And then uh, uh, every fourth one, we'll have a guest. People do confuse me as a young Brad Pitt, though. 
Dude, I do you know, I have, I have modeling agents throwing their business cards at me while I drive down the street. Do you? It's yeah. a problem. It is. It's a cross that we bear. Yep. Hey, uh, so again, we're at the uh, Legends Lair broadcasting here. Episode 6. I'm going to start saying it. Yeah. The Legends Lair. Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, follow us on Spotify. Follow us on YouTube. Go like our page on Facebook. Oh, um, a quick note. I said last episode I was looking into the Apple uh, mm-hmm. iTunes. However, Apple iTunes is uh, media or um, audio only. Audio only. Uh, I'm not going down that world. Maybe once uh, Spotify offers us a higher contract that they pay Joe Rogan, yep. maybe maybe we'll look into that. Yep. For now, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time. I think I could beat up a monkey. <laughs> <laughs>